trace a talking point tonight. Gmail passwords hacked. How safe really is internet usage in India? And joining me tonight to answer some of those questions which frankly affect all of us because now I'm really getting worried whether the Gmail account that I have on my phone, who knows, maybe that account may well have been hacked as well. Maybe my guest can help me figuring that out. Here in my studio is Rajesh Sharia. He is the president of the ISPAI, Karnika Seth, well-known lawyer cyber in uh, cyber law. She deals specifically in this area. Amit Dubey, he is a national cyber security expert. And Kushan Mitra, he is a managing editor, new projects and digital of uh, the Pioneer. Welcome to all of you on the program. Karnika, where does the problem lie? I is it just that we don't understand yeah. what cyber security is all about or are, or you know, as Kushan and Amit both are saying that Maybe simply we just don't yeah. understand, we don't care. No, I'd like to address this issue in two prongs. Number one, when it comes to uh, attacks, what, where do we face the attacks from? It's not only the malware. We mm. have a, a process called steganography, mm. by which even uh, simple music files or video files could have hidden malware keyloggers or trojans or other kinds of malware which would steal away the personal sensitive passwords or other information including credit card passwords from a person's computer or a mobile phone and not only the malware that I'm talking about or the attacks are through uh, you know sending these kind of files which could be downloaded like ebooks it could also uh, travel through uh, social media platforms where people share a lot of files and information it could also be through phishing attacks or in the modern day balance now we have other other uh, you know hybrid attacks like the wishing attacks which is use of voip over hmm. uh, on, on the internet hmm. or even uh, i would say smishing which is sms's hmm. so uh, we see a lot of crime I no mean, so let me let me get this clear and again you know i want this debate to be very factual and very informative for all my viewers are you saying for I'm, instance you know I, I use an android phone for instance yes. are you suggesting that when i click a picture through my Android phone, irrespective of what I do with that picture. I may take the picture of my child just to look at that picture 10 times in a day while I'm, while I'm at, at work. Yes. Are you suggesting it's possible for someone to get into my phone Absolutely. and access our entire album? Absolutely. So if how do I prevent from how that How many happening? people really actually, uh, would once before they're downloading any information or even uh, you know sending an email, do, hmm. do they bother to use a digital signature? Hmm. Or do they bother to check if uh, you know they've used any antivirus before downloading of that particular application or that particular uh, say game or could be anything. Hmm. So there are not many people who even uh, you know have bothered to read the terms and conditions of a website for instance so for so for so, so you know let, let, let's get this clear so you're saying that every time for instance you know, you download an app what happens you you go to the play store if you're on an apple product you go to you go to the apple store there if you're on, on some other product there is a there's a play store for samsung and other devices right. when you click on a particular app it takes you to a page where it is asking you for permission it is asking for your permission to access our personal details. It will say, I, you click on I agree. And, and that's if, it. if you've not read the terms, hmm. it would form a key I, I, I agreement. I don't think that I would have read those terms ever. And I have consent. a lot of apps on my you've phone. You've given the consent to use whatever information you've stored in that. It could be anything. It could be photographs. It could be even your credit card passwords or net banking pins, which you would have saved in your phone, which would just travel across and without your uh, authorization. So Kushan, how does one, what is, what is a safety firewall then? What is what is the other form of safety? Uh, I want to know, Kushan, which is which is beyond this password. Okay. You have you you have you have something called two-factor authentication on uh, Google as well as on uh, Apple, hmm. by which if I access my account uh, from another device, hmm. say for example, I also have an Android phone, and I just changed my Android phone, um, and I had to sign in with my Google account again. So Google actually sends me an SMS to the number that I have registered with Google. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody else can change that number. And this is what is called two-factor authentication. Hmm. Now that two-factor authentication can be broken. It can also, as uh, the pictures, as I said, the Hollywood leak hmm. of uh, pictures of Jennifer Lawrence and all pro proved that sometimes two-factor authentication isn't enough hmm. uh, until it is actually specifically asked for. And uh, many people, because they choose convenience over privacy, uh, they, they disable two-factor authentication because, you know, you, who's going to wait for an SMS? Hmm. Um, that way you have to praise the Reserve Bank of India, which has uh, forced two-factor authentication on all credit card transactions. 
Uh, so therefore, if I use my credit card on online, mm. I have to either enter a one-time password mm. or I have a digital password which I have to enter. Right. Uh, so nobody can misuse your credit card uh, it, by uh, just giving your credit card number and the CVV number. So that's one solution. You say that, they, that, that that's a solution yes. that people should be aware of. I, I, I beg to differ here. Yes, ma'am. Because yeah. there are a lot of cases where even mobile phones are not safe. If, if you're getting an OTP on the phone, for instance, there have been reported cases where even duplicate SIMs have been issued, hmm. if you remember. Hmm. And the OTP would be probably sent on that number. Hmm. Because the number belongs to the... So you know, what do you do then? When so in that kind of a scenario, what do you do? That's what we need tighter security. That, that, when I it, think whenever that they issue of a duplicate that. SIM, for instance, there have hmm. to be tighter security parameters. The identification of the person, the photograph, hmm. everything should be checked. Kushan? Kushan, you're saying something? I think over there, that, 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 is, that is a very uh, criminal act where somebody's actively done something wrong. Hmm. Um, that is not just hacking, that is uh, actually calling up this, uh, the cell, uh, telecom company and getting a duplicate SIM issued. It's not, it is not just digital crime, it is actual uh, uh, social crime over there. Hmm. Um, but, uh, and if the telecom company gets fooled, hmm. uh, they should be made liable Correct. over there. He's yeah, I feel but, so. The, but, you know, hmm. how many of us, and you know, uh, uh, let's just look at it from an Indian context. I think the credibility of so the websites is a very major point. Hmm. Because how many people really bother to check who is the real owner of a website, for instance. Right. There are floating websites. And this is a major lacuna in our Indian uh, IT system for the time being that whenever there is a request to register a website, the registrar is not uh, made liable or even has the obligation, mandatory obligation to check who the person is who is registered. Well, Kartika ji, what about cyber security? Cyber security? No, we have, you see, you have we have the, the law in the country. We have the IT Act in But place. do we know what that IT Act is all about? There are hardly no. any people who would understand the IT Act. There are, are there are trainings being imparted now. I've seen workshops in schools, also in in the uh, law enforcement. They are becoming more active. But the general masses, what about them? They no, are the I'm sure part. you you must be dealing uh, with the corporate sector as well. Yes, with with big companies, not Absolutely. just individuals. What is the feedback that you get? Do even do even big companies realize? What really is going well, on I would be very, in the virtual world? I, I, I'm not surprised to say that that there are a lot of companies who won't even have an IT policy in place. Won't even have an IT they policy. They won't even have an IT policy. No. Okay. In one thing is there. Yeah. Karnika, what should be done? Uh, well, tell me same, one important point password. that that people should take, not just change password, but no, also no. what about the law? The same password. What, how do I how do I realize how do I realize that there is an important feature in the legal I statutes we, which we, is going to help me? We can't expect everybody to be a lawyer. However, I feel it is now because of our huge dependency on the internet, it is, I think, crucial. Like we have in school, we teach them civics, mm. the constitution, the fundamental things about constitution. We are now introducing them to computers, hardware, software. But I think it's very pertinent at this point to introduce them what is the IT law in India. What is the so IT that law? they understand where is the privacy, where do they cross the line, mm. what they can do, what they can't do on the internet, and what are the repercussions of doing.